Hi, I'm Carly McAvoy. Today I'm talking about adding and subtracting polynomials and this is part of the sixth homework for Math 97. So I want to just remind you that there's important vocabulary here and that is like terms. Like terms have the same variable to the same power and you can only add and subtract like terms. So for example, if you're looking at these two problems, these are like terms because in the first example they both have x to the first power and the second one they both have y to the third power. And so when you add like terms you get a like answer. In other words, I don't change this to be x to the second power. I've got four x's and five more x's so I have nine x's. 9x, not 9x squared. It's just like in English or something else. If I had, if I have one pen and then I add another pen, I have two pens. I don't have two erasers or whatever. I don't change the unit. I'm just adding the number of those things together. So in number two, I have negative six and negative two, which is going to be negative eight, and it's going to be y cubed still. So in the next few examples, I have more than one term that I'm adding together, but I can only add together the ones that have like degrees or the same power. And so I'm looking at these two, I'm going to add x to the second to 3x to the second because those are like terms. And then I can add the 4x in, or combine the 4x and the minus 6x. I'm actually going to subtract those, right? But I can put the x squared terms together. I can put the x terms together. This is really 1x squared, right? So I have 1 and 3, which is 4x squared. And over here I have 4, and I'm taking 6 away. So I have negative 2x. I can't go any further because they have different degrees. I can't put them together into one term. That's as far as I can go. Over here, notice I have negative y to the second power. There is no y to the second power over here, so there's nothing I can add to that. Then I have plus 3y and minus 6y. Those are like terms I can combine. And then I have plus 1 and minus 7. So whenever I see students new to math, or maybe you're not new to math, maybe you've been doing math for a long time and you've never really felt good about it, one of the things that students do frequently is they don't show work. They do things in their head. And you know there's a there's a cause and effect. Did you get to be did you struggle with math because you tried to take shortcuts? Do you take shortcuts because you struggle? I don't really know what came first, but my feeling is if you take shortcuts before you're really ready to take shortcuts, you're going to get into trouble. So if you're struggling with math, try to do it my way, and it might be that you get better at math, and then later you can make some shortcuts. But you should be doing as much work as I'm showing you here on the paper. I can't combine the y squared term, and here 3y minus 6y is negative 3y. 1 minus 7 is minus 6. So why did I stop and say that? Because I just, I've had an experience with somebody just recently who's saying, yeah, I'm no good at math. And then when I watch them, they don't even try to do the steps that I'm doing. So most people can do math. I hardly ever run into somebody that I just say, well, that person's got no chance. It hardly ever happens, okay? And usually if it does, it's some major trauma injury they've had or something. So I think you can do the math. But I think that if you don't follow the process, it's going to be harder. And then you're going to think it's because you can't do math when, in fact, you're just not following directions. Okay, I'm not trying to gripe at you, but I just want to say give yourself the best shot and do what I suggest. Okay, I'm going to add these together. I can see I have 3p to the fourth. And then I'm going to come over here, and the other term I have is another p to the fourth. So those I can add together because they're like terms. The next one I have is 2p squared, and I don't have any other p squareds there, so I can't add anything to that. Then I have a minus 5, and I have a plus 1. Those two can go together. Now when I come over here, I can see I used the p to the fourth and the plus 1, but I don't want to forget that I also had a minus p that just didn't happen to go along with anything. So 3p to the fourth and 1p to the fourth is 4p to the fourth. 
plus 2p to the second. Now I'm going to put this in descending order as I go. And I know that I have 4, 2, 1, and then these are the zero power terms, right? So I'm going to go ahead and move this over, minus p, and then minus 4. So maybe you wrote it with the four, minus 4 and then the minus p. Probably doesn't matter unless they're specifically asking for descending order, but this is just the way people write it that are in the know. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it in descending order as I write the answer. Number six is just a different way to look at a problem. You can line up instead of me, I'm see how I'm putting things side by side. You could line them up one over the other like this and work it that way. Notice that the x squareds are lined up. There's nothing that matches the x and then my, con my constant terms or my zero degree terms are lined up. And that's as far as I can go because I have second degree, first degree, zero degree. I can't add things together unless they have the same power. So I'm stuck right there. I want to talk about for a second the opposite of a polynomial. When every term has a different sign, you have an opposite. So if this is my polynomial to start with, the opposite of that would be positive 5x minus 3. And the opposite of this would be negative x squared, positive 4x, and minus 1. So the, the, when I say the opposite, it just means change the sign of everything. And so when we're subtracting, that's what we're doing. We find the opposite of the second term. In other words, we put that minus sign out front. We're actually distributing a negative 1 through there. But distributing a negative 1 is the same as saying find its opposite. So I'm going to rewrite this, 6y plus 3. That doesn't change because I don't have anything in front of that. I'm changing that to plus, and I'm going to write the opposite of what's in here, which is minus 4y minus 7, because the opposite is just change the sign of everything. Now I'm ready to combine those. I have 6y minus 4y. Those are like terms and I have a positive 3 and a minus 7, and those are like terms. So I can combine that, and that would give me 2y and minus 4. Now if you're writing 2y plus negative 4, I'm fine with that. It's just that it's not as efficient, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, number 10, notice I have more than one power and more than one variable. I have a third, b to the second, but this is also a to the third, b to the second. So those are like terms a to the second b, a to the second b, those are like terms as well. Now because I'm subtracting, I need to find the opposite of that second term. So I'm going to keep the first term the same, change the subtraction to addition, and the opposite is going to be negative 4a cubed b squared and positive 5a squared b. And now when I combine those, I have a to the third b squared and minus 4 a to the third b squared. Those have the same variables to the same power, so they're like terms. And then I'm going to do plus 3a squared b plus 5a squared b. So I'm combining the terms I found after I got the opposite. And so I have really 1 and minus 4, which is negative 3a cubed b squared. And over here, 3 plus 5, which is 8, a squared b. And there's my fi finished answer. I can't combine those because they aren't like terms. And the last one is a trinomial minus a trinomial. And so what you want to do is find the opposite of the second trinomial because that's the one that's got the minus in front of it. So I'm not going to change this one. Notice that I'm rewriting it though. Instead of just thinking in my head the opposite, I'm actually writing it down. Because the more you do in your head, the more potential you have to make little mistakes. So if you constantly are doing things in your head and saying, oh, I'm just always making these little negative mistakes, well then write things down. And that's going to help you eliminate those kind of mistakes. Okay, so we have 6x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 6x squared, plus 5, minus 8. All right, so now I'm going to combine those. I have 6 minus 2, which is 4x to the fourth. Notice if I have 
fourth term, fourth power terms, my answer is a fourth power term. I don't change the power, just the number in front. Negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3x squared. Like terms give a like answer. And 5 minus 8 is negative 3. This now is finished because I can't go any further when I have unlike terms. So that's it. Okay, have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time.